Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about elegant code. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, my boss told me that I shouldn't focus so much on ele the elegance of my code and I should focus more on reducing the cost. I'm a little bit confused. What uh, is the cost really more important than the quality of the code that I am writing? Yes. Yes, it is. But we also have to define this a little bit because uh, this, these two things are a little bit subjective and they're important in different ways. So when your boss is talking about the cost, you may think, and of course yeah, I haven't talked to this person so I, might, I don't know exactly, but from my perspective, the cost of the code that you are writing needs to stand in proportion to the value that you are going to get from it. And cost is an interesting thing because in some cases the cost of you writing bad code is actually fairly low. It's actually very good. But in some cases the cost of writing really bad code is really really high. It's just that from the perspective of time it takes you to deliver that code it's really cheap, but if you consider the total time this code is going to stay in circulation, or the ter total time of uh, uh, the total amount of bugs or other issues that might come, or the I'd like to say the total work, the total work re related to the code might actually be really, really high, and that is something that goes missed in so many companies. I would say that it is the norm. I think that it is because the people who um, it, this is the, it's the classic problem. You have managers and stakeholders who don't have the first idea on how to do software development and you have irresponsible software developers who, well, not technically irresponsible, it's just that, as I've said before guys, the incentive for you as a software developer to move really fast and skip good practices is so high. I would even go as far as to say that it is similar to an athlete feeling the need to take steroids to compete with the other people. That is how it's the same sort of problem where you, if you write tests, if you really do test-driven development, your code, there's no discussion, will have a higher quality. The problem is that you're doing that for, for in many cases for a stakeholder or a boss who has no way of telling if the code is bad or good or bad they have no they they have no way of l looking at it and the only thing that they could technically look at is something that they don't measure and that is amount of bugs time spent on amount of, on the bugs and that is the cost that is the co that is the that is the cost that uh, you should be w very aware of because what's really interesting i think is that the only number practically any software team or any stakeholder ever ever cares about is how fast can I right now get this code out the door that's the only thing now the implied requirement here is that it should work but as fast as possible and that's a problem because if you have a software developer who doesn't really know how to do that or doesn't really look at the way off between okay uh, how fast can I produce this but in not just how fast but how stable can I make the solution the, because it's a balancing act if you just r hack it together sure you can get it out very quickly but then you have this other issue which is the fact that just because you, you, right now you are in a position where your boss is looking at you to deliver this code and so they're going to look at how fast can you do this and they're going to say you're good or bad based on that. That is how my, many developers feel. They are under the microscope. Once you ship it, and unless something is really wrong, like immediately, it might take a little while. It might take a few weeks, a few months, something like that. And all of a sudden, you will start to see that you actually have a lot of different bugs or issues or complexities that have been introduced based on the work that you have done. And that is what I talk about when I say the total time. If you look at the total time a feature needs to be under maintained, the cost of that code should be very apparent to you. And this is the key thing. I had this, uh, I actually had the, this moment just today, 
uh, well, yesterday technically, with my manager, I had an enormously f good learning opportunity for my product owner. And I'm going to talk to my sales team as well, because I know how to, I think I know what to tell them in order for them to realize how stupid this was. So we had a customer who completely refused to sign up with the system, uh, to, to, to buy into the system that we had been lobbied for. And we were very dependent on this customer. We needed their business. And they would not do it without us making a special, a special solution for them and their business model, basically their domain model. And I told them, uh, you should not do this. This is the worst thing that you can, in terms of cost, in terms of code cost, there is nothing more expensive than for you as an external company to maintain a special solution for another company. Nothing is more expensive. And they said, well, okay, but we really need this business. And I go, well, I'm fine. You just know that this is gonna be expensive and uh, I, will, I will show you how expensive it's going to be. And so they come with their requirements and the total, I think that it took them three weeks of on and off work, uh, se uh, several days at the very least, uh, if we just talk uh, time spent getting the specifications because it was a very complicated customer. And uh, I just told them, you now think about how much money you just spent in terms of salaries on just getting their specification. You're not able to do this in, in the time you usually make it, do it because you're dependent on that they want to help out. And this is now just slowing us down. It's costing money for the entire company. I really do hope that they're going to, the business that they're gonna bring is going to earn that up. And that's a, this is a side note, guys, these sorts of spe special solutions, they're usually very costly for small companies, extremely costly, almost always a bad investment uh, if you can avoid them, uh, or it's a good thing if you can avoid them. At larger scale, uh, if you have the same, the sort of traffic where this converts just a little bit better, it's usually worth it because you're gonna, you're, even if it takes a few weeks or even a year to implement the feature at large scale, if you make even 1% more money it's going to like out earn everything that you've wasted on it usually. But at small scale, you just don't have that sort of volume. So you're not going to get so much from it. You're just going to spe spend money instead of earning it. And so they spend all this time and then the requirements come in and I say, well, this is very specific. And I spend, I think that we, we, we had to redesign a flow, like a special flow of, uh, of events that had to take place. That took a certainly a week in tr and we had to change some very core concepts within the system, which is like it's costing at it's already legacy today because uh, the system was never designed to do this thing, but we have to do it because it's that's this is the way that this other company is working. And that took a week or two uh, and also in introduced a lot of complexity. And then when we finally get the specification on the actual thing we're going to deliver to them, that's also another week at least, I'm still not done with it, of, uh, of work and so forth. And this code is so highly specific in terms of requirement that here, this question uh, about cost, I've calcul I calculated that if I don't do test term development for this thing, this thing is going to break very quickly. And I ha so I have to really take my time here and really focus on the quality of the code that I'm writing because and document everything really well. Because this thing here is a special solution for this company. And the time it will take any of my coworkers to figure out how to do this if I stopped in, if I don't work in the company or if I'm sick or anything like that is going to be at there. It's practically impossible for them if I don't take my time now and really do this well. And so I talked to my PO and I said, I really do hope now because they, we have a dependency now and they, they send us data that we need to include with special cases in our code. I really do hope that you are now putting in place a process where you're continuously going to talk to them. So, and you have a contact person and contact details and some type of schedule where we can update all of this data because it's basically a static file with a bunch of special numbers and things that they require. And my PO goes, uh, uh, oh, oh yeah, I should pro. And then he goes kind of, yeah, I should probably do that. Yes, you should. And now I ask you, are you starting to see, because you are going to have to maintain this forever now. And that's going to be hours of work every time we want to do it. And so unless we're getting a lot of orders or a lot of money from our licensing fees from this, uh, this company, we are going to lose money on this entire thing. And the more things that you have that 
does uh, like this, the higher the cost of this code. And the same thing is true for you guys. If you write really, really shitty and quick code, uh, uh, that is a very good thing because uh, you, uh, as long as you know that the cost of doing that is just that you can just kind of change it whenever you want, then it doesn't really matter. Then sure, you don't have because you don't have to write really sophisticated code. You just have to write code that does the work well enough and find that balance. Because as long as you uh, you are able to change that code at, at the drop of a hat, or it's very simple code, it doesn't uh, require a lot of complexity or anything like that, it's perfectly fine to focus more on getting as quickly to market uh, as opposed to anything else. Because elegant code takes time to write, and you really need to think about, is it worth investing all of this time to make this solution really elegant? Because in many cases I see developers who they, they over-engineer code. They create like really advanced, elegant super solutions to even the most trivial problems where it's not really needed. You could just ship it and then be done with it. And if it needs to be improved, you can improve it at a later stage. But then you also have the way of, as I was saying, in my case, I had a, I have a, a piece of software where this thing needs to take time because if it doesn't take time the time we're going to have that customer come back and say oh we our system doesn't accept this thing why this is a bug this is a bug this any single change and this can still happen which is i think is beautiful about custom integrations they can change their mind at any moment and our system will not work with their system because they changed it and they didn't talk to us or they didn't have a process in place of oh now our API is doing this instead and we have no process for you guys so you just have to fix it oh are you busy do you have to oh sorry well we're gonna do this next week and you need to fix it before then because we don't care about you and so the maintenance of that code is super high it's not about it's you can't just calculate the time it took me and my coworkers to build the thing originally you have also have to calculate the time it's going to take to maintain it and if that cost is really really high then elegant solutions a lot of documentation and tests are actually going to make it's going to make the cost cheaper so yeah that's uh, pretty much what i have to say have a great day